All right, I'm already very disappointed. I was promised everybody would be in bow ties. It's okay. We'll get. We'll we'll move past this. Um, I am American, which means you can jump in at any point. You can yell at me. You can even tell me I'm wrong. I will enjoy it, and I will say something back um, because that will help the questions get to you the right way, get you the right information. I've got a lot of boring stuff that unfortunately is actually important. Um, so let's get to the point and see what we can do uh, to make it worth your while. The first important point is that when US immigration and visa law was written, uh, probably nobody cared about business in general, but they certainly did not have an IT startup in mind. So I kind of look at this as you, me, all of us together, We've got law, we have to work with it, and we have to make the right decisions, but we're in it together to find the right way forward that meets everybody's win-win situation. Sound like a plan? Cool. All right, we're in Latvia. So if you are a Latvian citizen and you have a Latvian passport, and that passport is relatively new, uh, the first thing that most people know is that in many cases, you don't even need a visa to go to the United States. Does anyone know, actually? Has anyone been to the United States? Yes. Did you guys need a visa when you did go? You did. Did you get a visa here? OK. Because you were a first time C1D guy. Different, slightly different case. You're talking about a. a a crewman visa, which is a totally different scenario. But illustrates the point that there are there's an alphabet soup. There's all kinds of letters and different things that we use to classify the visas. And if you look at it yourself, you will get confused. Now, the internet gives us almost everything we need. Uh, you can find the 20 best lawyers in any situation. You can find 18,000 websites that are going to tell you about other people doing the same thing. So in some ways, you don't need me to tell you any of this, but I'm going to give you a framework that will give you the right way to, to even look in the right place. And I'm probably talking too fast. My apologies. All right. So if you're doing a business meeting, if you're going to Disney World, if you're going to see your friend from college who's now in Wichita, you go on. You just go on to, it's, it's not even the State Department site, it's the Department of Homeland Security site, so that's not scary, it's just a different, different agency. Um, you go on, you fill out a few quick things, and then they will tell you whether or not you have been granted the special permission to travel without a visa. Now, there are plenty of things you can't do, I'll just keep it on that for a second, with that visa waiver travel. You certainly can't earn any money in the United States. You can meet with potential investors, which is probably going to be a first step for many of you. Um, you can do touristy things. Um, and you can stay for a maximum of 90 days, no questions after that point. Meaning, at, after 90 days, you have to return to Latvia. And in fact, you have to spend at least another 90 days back in Latvia before you can return to the United States um, on the visa waiver program. You can probably slip through in some cases. But you're running a huge risk at that point that the border guard in the United States is going to take one look at your travel history and say, sorry, buddy, you, you got to get on the next plane back to Latvia. You've, you've gone too long without a visa. And for the record, if there's anyone who's not Latvian in this country, that's the same rule that applies to Americans or anybody else who are trying to stay longer in Latvia or even Germany without a visa. At some point, you need to formalize yourself in the country. Every country does it. Any questions about that? It matters who's paying you. You can't be paid by someone in the United States for anything other than maybe meals and incidentals to you being there. So if your company here in Latvia or in London is paying you or paying a salary, it's possible you can do that. But if you're going to the United States, you cannot be paid for services that you're doing in the United States for any reason whatsoever. It's not really fair, but it, it is the law. Do you have a do you have a specific twist on that? Yeah. 
Yeah, as long as you're being paid, you can't be for being paid for work you do in the United States. If you are having a business meeting to set up something you're going to do back in Latvia and then you're going to get paid later, that can work. It's just a matter of earning money by from the U.S. side while you're in the United States. That was a good, good question. Actually, I'm going to take the guy in the back who's hiding behind the stairwell. Awesome. All right, next up. Neither and both. Um, I forget exactly how long it is. Again, it's not my office that does it. You get a few months, I think, or six months. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get a six month period of, of validity. Um, it'll it'll tell you. Um, it's fifteen dollars, and there's a little story with that fifteen dollars. The State Department did not come up with that money, or the Department of Homeland Security didn't come up with that money either. That. Most of that $15 comes from the U.S. Department of Commerce and goes to a funding of an initiative to support U.S. business worldwide. So thank you. Um, humorously enough, I was in a meeting in the State Department when we found out that someone that the Commerce was going to add on via a strange law that they're going to get money out of people traveling to the United States like that. We're like going, okay. That's how it works. I mean, that's how laws work. Someone, someone for their benefit, adds it to the process and I'm glad that promotes you as business and you get to pay $15 when you come over without a visa. Yes. It depends. Um, some people can get an answer immediately. Some, it'll tell you you're going to wait and get an email. I have heard situations in which people get an email that they're okay to travel and then a week later have that taken back. That's bad news. The good news is, is that the way we do visas here, at that point, you just come in for a visa. Um, and in almost all cases, even last minute, we can accommodate your visa travel. If you discover on Friday evening that you need a visa and your ticket was on Sunday, you're probably going to have to move it by a day. But you can come in and see me on Monday. You should expect it right away. I'm just kind of giving you the strange things. And in general, you're probably not going to have a problem. Um, most people are perfectly fine and get their answer right away. No. There's a legal difference. Um, it's waiving your need to have a visa for a 90-day period. It really doesn't matter to you that that's the case. Um, but there are some things that do apply. For example, you can't, if you went to the United States without a visa and you decided you wanted to start studying or you were got a job and someone was even going to do your work visa, you can't stay and change your status in our parlance, in our, the way we say it. You actually, because you're not there on a visa, you actually have to leave the country, go back to Latvia or Canada if you're just going to go over a border, get a visa and come back. And one of the legal reasons that's the case is because you're not in the United States on a visa. You are in a, a wave status where they determine that you don't need one. That's probably more information than you need, but there are slight legal differences about having a visa and, have, and not having one. And we're, when this conversation segues into actually having a business tourist visa, that's where these changes really matter. Because you could be in the United States on a business visa, get a job, and eventually stay in the United States and change and get your visa in some situations. You could not do that if you arrived without a visa. Now, the worst case situation many times is you have to come home and see your mother at Christmas, you get your visa and you go back. So it's not a terrible, terrible thing to have to leave the United States and come back and get a visa, but just part of the thing. Next up. The without a visa travel? Yeah, it's all on the internet. And and the airline is going to be the one who's going to be asking you for proof. You'll print something out. Because the way international travel works, most governments, especially the United States, hold the airline responsible for allowing someone into the United States without the right stuff. So if you talked your way through the airline and Lufthansa said, you're a great guy, I don't think you need a visa, and you end up in JFK, uh, they will send you back on Lufthansa, charge Lufthansa, I think, $3,000, and put it on the, the bad Lufthansa column in their, in their list. I'm not trying to pick on Lufthansa. I'm sorry. 
Can I move on to actual visas and not visa waiver travel? All right, I know it's exciting. Well, how do they normally pay you? I mean, is it going, is it part of, if it's going to account in, in Latvia, is it, if you're going there for a service that you actually are doing when you go there, it could be a problem. If you're going there as like a business meeting, because every once in a while you need to get in the same room with the people who are paying you for your online service, and you want to talk strategy and the fate, you know, things like that, that falls in the good category. If you're going there and you start working on your product for them and getting paid there, it could be a problem. Now, this is where it gets into, we start having to get into very specific things, which is actually, I'm going to segue into this. Um, when you travel visa waiver, the border guards don't care about nuance. If you walk up and you start that conversation with a border guard, uh, I'm not really sure, I am earning money, I'm not he's going to send you home because the the without a visa travel gives them the ability to basically turn you around at any point because you're not actually on a visa um, and their job is not to not to decide complicated cases mine is so here at the US Embassy here in Riga we do all the visas but in this case and I'm gonna say it now I don't need to say the words but we call a business visa a B-1 visa and a tourist visa a B-2 visa. And in many cases, we give a combined, I know it's really exciting, B-1, B-2 visa for 10 years to most Latvian citizens who apply for one. So if you have a complicated, if you're traveling a lot to the United States, your situation is complicated, or you have been hassled by border guards in the past, that's you want to start the visa process. Come in, have this conversation with me. And then that visa actually gives you a degree of assurance and protection that a U.S. officer has looked into your case, has decided, yeah, this is okay. And that is a whole different level of, of clout and status at the border. Now, the border guard can turn anyone around for any reason, including me at the border too. So it's nothing's definite, but if you're doing the right thing the right way, you don't have... Oh, you don't really need to be worried about anything. That makes sense? Um, there are two websites that are really important for you if you're interested in starting this process. The first is the State Department's big website. It's called travel.state.gov. That means that this is the one website that's going to get into uh, visa and different matters for the entire world. Uh, there's actually a business visa center. It didn't take me too many clicks to find it and if you just search engines um, business visa center uh, you, you'd get this anyways and you it can ask it can answer a lot of the questions that might be in your head right now um, including frequently asked questions but you know in the end you're if you're at this point and you're considering coming in for a business visa anyways you know take a look help you formulate the stuff you're going to need and then you're eventually going to come in and see uh, one of the consular officers at the U.S. Embassy. Questions on this site? Yep. To go on travel.state.gov, it's free. It's the internet. Um, oh gosh, I we just transferred into the euro, and I'm blanking on actually what the euro cost is for the visa. I can be slightly a. Uh, it was 89 lats. <laughs> I think it's. I'm not gonna even. Yeah, is that more understandable? I hope I'm not fined by Latvian government for not transferring my head to the Euro yet. Um, questions about the Visa Visa Center and what you can do with it? Feel free to explore. The other, I'll put this up in case anyone actually wants to read. Um, the Embassy maintains its own website. It's a lot of the same information. Some of it's very specific, and it will do a better job of actually giving you, here in Latvia, you know, bring us this and this, or do this and this. I also have a very, I have a great staff of Latvians and Americans who can answer your question. You can call before you, you even come in if you have to. And you're going to have my email address now anyway, so 
or I don't know, many of you have met Elaine. Elaine, our, our economic officer at the embassy and commercial officer, she, uh, she and her staff are pretty great too. So you have a lot of resources and we'd like to think the U.S. Embassy occasionally makes itself available to you so that you, you don't have to think too hard or ask too many people to find one of us to answer your question. Does that feel good? Good. I guess the, the nothing is, I gotta leave you with a little bit of uncertainty. Nothing is guaranteed or for sure here. You have to do the right thing. We ask you to do it the right way. Um, but there are times where it's not going to happen the exact time you want. And we'll do our best to, if that happens to you, explain to you why. The biggest reason I can think of is that you really just want to move to the United States. And uh, that's sometimes just not possible. I wish it were. But um, the U.S. immigration law system has decided that they're going to make it very difficult for you to just pick up and go to the United States. Uh, we say willy-nilly or just for the heck of it or or however you want to phrase that. And there's a way to do it right. But if your dream is just to go to Silicon Valley, pitch your product, stay there, and win it all, um, you can't just get on a plane and do that. The travel.state.gov gets into all kinds of more stuff. And you can actually, I didn't only have part of this, this site up. But if you get really excited and you want to read about all the possible visa opportunities, they're all, they're all right there. And you might actually find that you fit into a different category um, or something else applies to you, be it you're performing, you're a journalist, you're a seaman, all kinds of stuff. Did that confuse everybody? All right, guy in the cool sweater. Well, it could be anything. I mean, we're going to get into the very the varied ways in which you physically enter the United States. It could take on many different forms. Sorry. So this is switching into the actual U.S. Embassy in Latvia site, which is in Latvian and Russian. So you, if you go to our web page, uh, travel.state.gov, the previous site doesn't give you awesome trilingualness. Our site does. I prefer to read in Latvian myself. Um, I am jumped into several other pages as well because in the end, if one of you or all of you decide that it is the right thing to work in the United States or take your business to the United States, there is, there is a way to do that. It's complicated. It's wonderful. But there is a way. And I want to get into several of those, those ways. And again, we are working on, by we I mean the United States Senate and all the other brilliant people in the United States, uh, if we actually pull off reforming our visa and immigration system, um, they are looking specifically at changing startup and IT laws that make sense. We're not there. We're still dealing with the latest version of immigration law from 1952. There are, uh, yeah, I know, it's, it's great. Um, and just due to the nature of competing different groups in the United States, um, they for years and years have done their best job to limit reform. As you've seen iterations of this over the time. I, I hope something gets better. But until then, and as I go through some of this stuff, just understand that it's the best way forward in a not great legal system that everyone's trying to change, but no one can actually pull off. Let's there's three basic categories that'll get you employed or your business in the United States. The H-1B is the most traditional work visa. This is if Google hires you and brings you to the United States, or it's usually a big company, or Deloitte, or whomever. Um, they got to do a lot of stuff before you even get to come into an embassy. They, let's just, can I use Google or is that, that's too boring. Someone give me a better company in the US. I'm not doing Apple. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm a mistake with Google, Google then. It's terrible. Um, so Google wants you and your particular skills. They have to file with the US Department of Labor that they can't find any US citizen who can do your same job. 
They need to go to the Department of Homeland Security's Citizenship and Immigration Services to say that we want specifically you. They have to list the qualifications not, uh, that a person like you has, and they need to send that petition for approval. And then once that gets approved, approved, you get a notice, and then eventually you'll bring that to me. I'll also have the electronic notice when I pull your file up that you've been specifically selected because you're a fantastic programmer and that all, all everything's in place to bring you to the States. That means that there's going to be a long time delay before you, from you getting that job offer from Google to you arriving in your new awesome pad in San Francisco. So just, just keep that in mind, that if you are going to go the traditional route and a major company wants you and is going to hire you, that's it. Don't get too dismayed. I think despite the fact that a company has to go to the Department of Labor in the United States and prove that they can't find you in the States, which is probably a lie, and then they do the petition that, you know, this is you and it's things. All, as long as they have an immigration lawyer and it's a big company and they've done this before, it takes time, but, but they'll do it. So, I mean, if your dream is just to go work in the United States and bring your particular skills, you'll probably pull it off, particularly in the IT sector. So if, go to it and just plan ahead. Questions? Yep. All right, hold that thought. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to get into what happens when you set up offices and stuff like that. Um, eventually, you probably won't hire, if you want to set up an office in the States, you, H-1B is probably not your first visa, and I'll, I'll show you why in a second. Um, but if you establish yourself as a major company and then you start hiring people like this, you probably will get there as an employer. But you can't, you're not going to do this for yourself. Oh, it's capped. For no good reason. Sorry, there's a lot of my personal editorial in here for humor and, and effect. Um, there are many good legal reasons why the United States Senate is limiting the number of these visas total but they do it, which means that in a year, if there's tons of demand for businesses for these visas, they almost go down to a lottery system to divvy things up or first the person who first put in their petition. Many people who are pro-business in the United States would like this to be less of a cap, but the other people who are not in fan of things like that um, keep this cap. So just keep in mind that there are situations in which everything goes well for you and you have to wait a whole extra year before Google can get you through. Fair? All right. L category visas. They're technically called intercompany transfer. These are basically offices where you can go from an office to office and work and you get money from that company. Again, if it's Deloitte and you work in the Deloitte office in Paris, and you want to go work in the Deloitte office in New York, Deloitte can transfer you within the company to an office they've set up. I could waste all of our time going to all of the individual points about an L1 of a transfer of a company or opening your office, like opening a branch office of your company here in Latvia in the United States. It can happen under this auspice, this way, and you're going to do a lot of research and you're probably going to get a lawyer. In fact, let me just say, I'm here and I do make the decisions on many of these visas in the country. Almost everybody who's opening up a significant business in the United States, you're going to get a lawyer in the United States. I will help. I'm happy to answer questions in advance as you're trying to formulate how and what to do with your business. But at some point, um, I just, I can't be, or the embassy here can't serve particularly my, my shop because we get to do the decision itself. We're not going to walk you through all these steps, even if we wish we could, because it, it gets into, we're flipping our role there. So if you are going to open an office in the United States, you're going to get an immigration lawyer. And that person who's probably done this many, many times before is going to be able to get you through some of the complicated stuff. So if you're at that step, don't, don't worry about some of these details. And, and, and I might not be able to walk you through all of them, but you're going to get a lawyer. They're nice people most of the time. And... I was just playing around with this before coming here of, hey, how do I find a good immigration lawyer in uh, Montana or San Jose? Um, and it's pretty easy to get nowadays with 
all the information. You, you can find a good list. You can consult friends. Um, you can do this right. All right, just, just going to this, this L1 transfer. Petitioning US entity must have a qualifying. You have to have a real office. Um, you, you laugh when you see things like physical space must be secured for a new office. But obviously, in this day and age with IT and startup things, uh, offices are less important. I mean, you having your own special big old office is less important than it should be. That being said, there are still parts of the law that say it's got to be real. You have to have real space. You'll see what some of this stuff. Basically, you have to be real and you have to be really working. So anyone here who wants to think of opening up a kind of fake office, it probably won't work. Um, you also have to have a business plan that grows into a real managerial position there. So not only this is where this, this visa might be for someone a little bit more established, um, not only do you have to have a real entity, a real space in the beginning, after a year, you have to be, you have to be really able to hold a full staff member and a manager. All right, E2 treaty investors. This wake up. I'm sorry if I bored you with the first stuff. This one is going to be a little bit more important for you. If you are in, we'll say investor, treaty investor. Um, this is most likely what you, as a young person starting your company, this is the visa you will probably do once you're ready to open up in the United States. Um, treaty. Uh, we don't do this with every country. We don't do it with Russia. Um, you have to have, and thank goodness that someone else has negotiated and done this before, but the US, United States and Latvia does have a treaty investment, it, or investor treaty in place, which means that we, we've we ratified on paper, and I'm here to tell you in person, and when you work at the US Embassy, we do this, that investing in each other's countries is good for both of us. We believe that to the bottom of our hearts in every which way. It's why the US ambassador runs around Latvia and occasionally runs around the United States trying to get Latvians in the United States, American companies here, back and forth. We do not view the world as winners and losers or zero sum. We like it, I want, I feel happy when we send Latvians to go to the United States to earn more money, to come back and build a bigger house for themselves in Latvia. We like this, we, we think the business is good. And Elaine and Guntars and the team at the embassy are there to do that, to help you get there. So I'm glad we have this treaty. And I like, these are my favorite visas to do. It's a lot of work for me because I get to stick my face into your business plan and make sure that you really are a businessman and you really are doing some investment in the United States. But when I, when I approve these, it's cool. So if you are interested in, in starting something in the United States, investing in the United States. Now, it could be, let's get into it. Yes, you could have your own real estate empire in the United States and fall into this category. But you can also, like our friend Laudas from Draugiums, this is what he did. Um, he decided that he was going to take some of his money that he earned here in Latvia and start up something in the United States and make it work. And he became an investor in the United States. Him and his family, once they get that status, they're allowed to work in the United States. The kids are allowed to go to school. Um, every few years, you got to come back and renew your visa if you're going to continue in this status. But it basically sets you up in such a way that you can continue to operate your business in the US. You still have stuff in Latvia or anywhere else. You can keep going on this. All right. You have to really invest. You have to have a real plan you have to be the type of person that can execute your plan. And it has to be, it could be new or existing, but you've got to be really doing something. It's not there. You don't get to go on an E2 treaty investor because you have a great idea that you're going to go pitch around and then figure it out when you're there. I, I kind of wish that in some ways that was the case, but you figure that out before by this step. At this point, when you want a treaty E2 investor visa, you're ready. You've got the money, you've got the idea, you are going to make a successful enterprise or lose all your money trying because that's business. Bonafide and not marginal. I've done E2 treaty investor visas starting starting around fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars for initial capital investment. 
not that much. The lower, if you're in that range, you've got some convincing to do because that's not a huge amount of money to start a business that's going to take off real soon, but it's possible. So get out of your mind that you need to wait for, you know, you know, starting fund of $500,000 to do this. It can be done with less money, lowest 50 to 75,000 and a really good plan. Questions on that note? So, great question. Um, you can get, <laughs> let's go requirement three. You will be in full, you will be in possession of the funds you will invest and the funds must be committed to your business. You can do it with money that's committed to you, but that's part of what you come into the visa interview with. Um, if money has been committed to you, it, you have to prove, and we know what to look for here in Latvia. Um, I've seen, I saw a case fall apart where it was family money that they couldn't really prove was really committed. Um, it, it's as simple as bank accounts and a proper explanation of going through it. You'd be surprised. It's why the U.S. consular visa system has you talking with us in person. We care far more about that interview than almost any other country in the world. Your documents are important, but we are talking to you. And this surprises many, many people who might have had a great portfolio put together for them. And I ask a simple question like, where did this money come from? Who's investing in you? And they can't answer. And then they're surprised when they get refused the visa, like, oh, it's all in the papers. I said, I know it's in the papers. Can't you tell me where your money's coming from? I, I've seen this scenario before. Not, not, I mean, we see this in many different, different ways. And I'm, we're not antagonistic. Um, I talk often in the visa interview the way we are talking right now but it's still a direct question and we still expect a real answer. So if you're really doing this and you really have the money and you really have the idea, you don't have to be worried about that scenario. You can kick back, smile, you know, say how you're doing because you're in the U.S. Embassy and it's okay to say that to people you don't know and just say, this is what I'm going to do. You pitch me. Just like you guys work on your pitch and your business life and your investment plan, this is part of that process. That just gets more to the point. And we, yeah, I don't think that it applies to many people in this room, but if your money comes from funny places and you can't explain it because it's coming from a place you don't want to explain, or you'll get in trouble, don't come to the U.S. Embassy. <laughs> or Yeah, this is where we get into, but you, you have that in place before you get to that, this step. Committed to you. I mean, not. I mean, see, really committed to you. I mean, the reason I'm not going to go into details is because that that comes out in different ways. I mean, there are different ways of proving that you have investors in money committed to you, um, and that's why I actually started with the visa waiver travel and then the business visa because you may have had flights back and forth and meetings. You you may have secured a bunch of this stuff in advance appropriately before you get to this step. Again, this visa, which may be your dream and may be how you get to be the next great startup billionaire, um, you don't start with this process. You don't walk in with an idea. You, this, this, is, this is ready for, ready for the big time United States. And you got to do it yourself. I mean, most of you, that is the case. I mean, you're, you're, the plan is for you to come over and make your investment dream come true in the United States. All right. Well, you might want to fill that plan out a little bit, but if you have lots of money and you have an idea, yeah. You, you can, but you have, to, you have to actively come over and be a part of it. So it can be an existing enterprise, but all the same way you, you're going to come, you would walk in with how you're going to expand on or develop. I mean, you, you could just be a pure investor, but at that point, if you're just putting money into someone else's company and you're not going to be there, maybe you don't, you don't do this because you don't need to because you can just 
to back here in Latvia and have fun. We this this would if you just want a visa to go to the United States, you're not probably just doing the E two visa. You you take your easy easier options. And if you give all of your lottery money to some company, I'm sure they'll give you an H one B or whatever you want. I'm taking a lot of time. All right, let me just zip through this, and then you, then you could talk to me afterwards. We can arrange a meeting later. I'm just one small part of this big picture. Um, the U.S. Small Business Administration actually has awesome stuff online to help you with a business plan that makes sense. So you can go and use resources available online about starting up a business in the United States. Um, this can help you put your business plan together. It's a cool resource, paid for you by taxpayer dollars in the United States. Have fun with it. Um, and then we get into some of the other cool people at the embassy who do stuff. The political and economic section, there's Guntars. Have everybody met Guntars, the U.S. Embassy? Great guy. There's our ambassador who loves all of these ideas. And we like, I mean, this is, if you come into my section with a great idea and I look through your stuff and give you a visa and Elaine and Guntars, you know, helped out, put you in the right direction at some point, I'm excited. It's one of the first things out of my mouth when I have my meeting with the ambassador once or twice a week. I say, this is awesome. This is happening. He's like, that's incredible. We love it. But you got to do it right. Select USA is the, uh, well, it's a U.S. Commerce and State Joint Plan. It's just commerce that we help them out because there's no commerce guy here. That's great. Um, we want you to invest in the United States. There are people to help. Um, there are things to bounce your idea off. Were you here? Aaron Brickman gave you a lot of information on this. Who was here when Aaron spoke to some of you? All right. Well, it's all part of this big plan that we want countries like Latvia to bring money to the United States and the other way around. But right here, we're talking about you going to the United States and having a good time. My information, if you can read it. Guntar's information. Um, if you can get on the website, or just, just go to the U.S. Embassy. It's really easy to get a hold of, of any of us. All right. Do we want to just wrap up now and I can talk to people as we break up? Or do you want me to take more questions now? All right. Do people want to ask questions? All right. One. Well, yes, I would hesitate to just give you a straight up answer now because it sounds like I would want to know more to give you the right answer. But if you've got you've got an idea, there's money or you're working with somebody, there, there's a way to do it. Um, my guess is if you're already at a, at a healthy stage in that process, it may be time to reach out to an immigration lawyer to find out what the best step is because it does, it gets a little complicated, which is not bad. They just might be able to, to look at exactly what you want to do and put you in the right category to succeed. I don't joke ever. Did they, well, here's the thing. I care about, let's let's start what I care about. As, as you, as a person personally appears before me for a visa with their plan, it needs to be the plan. If that person knows that Google is going to buy them and that they're actually trying to get there a, a different or inappropriate way just to be bought out later, that's not right. If it happens, it happens. I mean, really, I mean, life happens and we get it, but... We don't want you, and we do try to prevent people from starting with a um, a fake plan that that's not wrong in and of itself to do something else that's not wrong in and of itself. But the combination of going about one way to get somewhere else for a different reason is wrong. All right, I am going to hang around a little bit. I look forward to talking with you. I hope that you can, if you get your idea, you want to go to the United States. Look it up, 
ask us. We, we're rooting for you, and we think it's good for both of us. Thanks. Okay, now we're going to have a couple of announcements. Uh, Richard will tell some information. So this is a very short announcement about our meetup. So probably those who don't know me, my name is Richard Gailom. And I'm a uh, co-founder uh, of this nice organization called LABACA. Uh, LABACA stands for Latvian American Beans Association of California. It's a non-profit and it's intended for uh, exchanging uh, the, uh, the contacts and exchanging the communities between Silicon Valley, uh, mostly in the, uh, California, uh, the most important techni technical part of California and then in Latvia. So, and this year we finally get the first uh, meetup in Silicon Valley in Sunnyvale. So, uh, this is this, this will happening in, in end of the January and beginning of the February. We do, don't know exactly uh, name uh, time of the because we, we don't have a exact place uh, until now. But uh, it's all, it, it will be known in a half, couple of, of days and uh, a week. So in place is planned in uh, one of the startup places in Sunnyvale. It's probably could be Nest GSV and. Uh, our target is uh, around uh, 11,000 Latvian ancestry Californians and uh, technical entrepreneurs and companies from Latvia Baltics, which uh, probably will be at that time uh, in California and would like to meet some kind of uh, Latvian ancestry uh, guys who is working in some uh, great companies, which is mentioned there. And uh, this meetup is, 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 is standard for established technology business and startups. Uh, there's a couple of already established uh, technology companies in California founded by Latvians. Probably one, one, of, the fa one of the famous uh, cases is uh, uh, Lauris Libers, probably, and, and Printful, which is uh, uh, we ex we expecting me, uh, we we're expecting Lauris to come to this event uh, to Sunnyvale. And Printful, his company, is actually is one of the largest sponsors of this event. And uh, yeah, so until now, we discovered. Uh, Guys with, with Latvian ancestry in, in, in those companies, uh, which is mentioned there in Google, Intel, Twitter, NVIDIA, Apple, Tesla Motors, uh, Oracle, Udacity, Blackbox, and, look, and we are definitely looking for more. So the reason why I'm talking to you guys is uh, if you know somebody who is uh, probably working there right now, so please just share the information with me and then we will be glad to, to, to invite uh, and ex uh, enlarge our contacts uh, and other stuff. And the reason for for Latvian entrepreneurs actually to join this community is probably you 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 a lot of you know how hard is contact uh, contact with those uh, huge tech companies. Uh, emails from here for 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 contacts is actually not working. So the best case is is looking for insider in the companies and probably the most effective way probably sometimes is to find out somebody with with, with your national ancestry and which which is uh, we are uh, working quite hardly. And uh, it's this this meetup is not only for Latvians, of course. We're looking for all Nordic and Baltic uh, Baltic guys there, and uh, of course uh, there's a couple of uh, Americans, which actually is a quite interesting story about one lady who is uh, who's got a uh, uh, degree in uh, New York University in Baltic history, and uh, he's very like, big patriot uh, of Latvia, and uh, accidentally he. Her, uh, her hus husband is working for Tesla, which is actually very hard to find out. Uh, so somebody who is who is who is working there and open to, to, to connect. So this is how, how this networking works. So just uh, if if somebody will be there at the time, it, it's uh, as I said gen in, in the end of January and beginning of February in California. Just keep in touch. Uh, we uh, we have update, we will have updated information about time and exact time and place on uh, labacorg side. And Evan Bright, uh, you you can easily find out. And this is just uh, contacts for, for 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 organizers. So just keep in touch and spread spread the word. And and thanks uh, Tech Hub for for for, uh, for for supporting this meetup. Yeah. 
it's the end of January. We we don't know we don't know exactly which which uh, which date it is. It will be. So we are just just aligning the time schedule. Okay, thank you. And now we will have another announcement, but this will be a little bit different because it's a video announcement. <laughs> Guys, this is Preet. You might know me. If not, then hello to you in Riga. My name is Preet Saluma. I am the co-founder of Garage 48 and Mobile One Day Estonia. Um, so, and today I want to talk to you about Garage 48 hardware and arts. This will be a little bit different Garage 48 uh, in its whole history. Uh, the first time in Garage 48 history we will be doing a hardware hackathon. This basically means that instead of just doing mobile apps or web apps, we're going to build robots or some gadgets or whatever. So basically what we will do on 7th to 9th of February in Tartu here in Estonia is that we're going to invite together electronics engineers, mechatronic en engineers, software engineers, product designers, architects, artists, basically everybody who deals with real life uh, issues and problems and, and gadgets. Uh, and the idea would be that uh, we would do and try to build real stuff during 48 hours. Uh, why we're quite sure that this will make uh, this will be possible is that in spring we had a couple of test runs together with the Estonian Academy of Arts and Tartu University who also co-organizing this event here in Tartu uh, and we put together some architecture students and physics students and they built uh, during the weekend some small uh, ideas and prototypes for ideas in architecture like changing uh, the shape of some kind of metal sheet uh, according to sound or or, or light and uh, this was great and they, they, they really did it so I think from four teams three made it and in uh, in Garage 48 uh, Kaliningrad we saw uh, the whole bunch of guys six guys building a robot from scratch which you could control from Android and and you could drive around look around and grab stuff with your with your claw so basically we're going to do a very very cool and very different hackathon uh, and uh, this kind of Garage 48 format with the hardware together. This is the first time uh, ever, ever anybody has done it in, in Baltics. Uh, so this will be a very, very cool event. So you have to all come, obviously, because uh, what would be Latvia without Estonia or vice versa, Estonians be without Latvians. We have great friends and uh, uh, we will have a very cool, uber cool building. It will be a wartime hospital, which is nuclear resistant. So we can even uh, go uh, deeper in the ground as on top of the ground so this will be a very cool venue there uh, we will have lots of gadgets we are going to order Arduinos and Raspberry Pis and all this kind of stuff and uh, of course um, you can meet your Estonian colleagues so I think my time is up otherwise it won't be beeping so um, we try to also organize a bus from Riga so you all have to come and this thing says that they have to stop thanks bye I'm, I'm uh, sorry to uh, correct Preet, but it's actually not the first time when such a hackathon is happening. I've been involved in such hackathons since 2003, but for Garage 48, yes, it's uh, first time. And uh, yeah, we do expect it's really uh, great uh, and really meaningful outcome from it. And one more announcement about the conference that we are organizing in the February. So I think most of you already heard about uh, Tech Chill happening February 13th. Um, we put the website up a little while back, so you'll have seen some of the speakers. There have been some additions. Um, I don't know if they're on that slide, but um, we have a guy uh, coming over from the UK, um, CEO of Nifty Drives. Nifty Drives is a hardware startup. They make a, um, uh, a storage device for Macs. 
and they're, uh, they have the distinction of uh, raising, of being the startup, the hardware startup raised the most money on Kickstarter in the UK. So they raised about $380,000 over uh, one month. Um, and that was some time ago, I think about a year or 18 months ago. So it's a real story about um, how to use crowd, how and when to use crowdfunding. And they've learned all the mistakes uh, in there. So if you're interested at all in crowdfunding, that will be a very interesting topic. Do we have any of the others? No. No. Um, so there's some of the speakers who are on there already. Mike Butcher will be familiar to you. Colette Ballou is headlining in the morning. Uh, amazing on marketing and PR. Um, we have um, Max Niederhofer coming. He's now a partner at Sunstone Capital. Used to be with Excel. Uh, has an entre entrepreneur background. Um, and a few more. But beyond um, the conference itself, we have a number of pre-conference things happening. So Mini Seed Camp, I think last month I said Mini Seed Camp is coming here uh, for the first time in Riga and uh, I'm actually seeing the applications and I'm very disappointed because there are very few Latvian teams already applied to Mini Seed Camp. So um, uh, I'm in Seed Camp, it's a great program. There's a few others in here who are at Seed Camp. You should try applying um, and the, uh, the there are the two top teams, uh, top Baltic teams, uh, in the mini seed camp pitches the day before will automatically get into pitch at Tech, at Tech Chill Baltics. So there's a double whammy for you. Uh, so mini seed camp will be happening the day before. We also have Rob Fitzpatrick coming, um, who is a, a lean and, cus, cus, and customer development specialist, a uh, guy with a lot of experience. He's, he's written uh, at least one, if not several books, um, and will be doing a workshop uh, the morning before seed camp and we're also working with with AmCham uh, the American Chamber of Commerce uh, looking at putting together a seminar about getting into the US market so lots of things happening both February 12th and February 13th uh, we're trying to bring the best of, uh, of everyone we can to Riga um, and so tickets for Textual Baltics are on sale now on the website the early bird will run out soon so if you want to get cheaper tickets you should do that soon uh, Tech Hub members have a special price, of course. Um, any questions about any of this? The price for for watching the conference? Yeah. So actually, actually, it's this. So that the the prices are for entry, and um, but the teams that that do win to pitch uh, will get a couple of couple of tick tickets in but you won't know that until then so we can refund if you've already bought, bought, bought a ticket yeah 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 so it's it's attending the, the 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 conference and seeing all the presentations meeting everyone there so the other key thing is there's going to be a, there's going to be a lot of investors there's going to be people from Estonia Lithuania and beyond um, so it's both net networking as well as seeing the presentations um, but yeah, we, we will be probably running a live stream. We'll have a bunch of information, but there's nothing like being there in person. Emil. That is a good question. So we actually have the to the topic for this this year is more around go to market and the marketing side. Um, so yes, there is there is less in there. Um, there will still be people around there, and there'll be a lot of people who may be CEOs and investors now, but have an engineering background and people you want to meet, people you want to learn from. So I think it's still valuable to attend for all sorts of people who are in in the various teams. But um, but yeah, the the bias is definitely more on marketing. Um, sales and go to market this year. The application deadline for which thing? For uh, for there's an application deadline for Textual Baltics pitching, and I don't remember it off the top of my head. It's on the website. I'm pretty sure it's on the website. But that that application, I think, is about is it about a week before the event, so that the the pitching deadline is is not too far ahead. Uh, Mini Seed Camp, if I'm not mistaken, is the 19th of January. 27 for 
for mini seacamp and lot is going to give you a real time update on tech chill deadline for pitching <laughs> she's got the magic machine there any other questions while she looks up the answer February 5th February 5th for pitching at tech chill yep so you have some time for that yet questions all good see you all there thanks Thanks. And now I would like Ernest to tell about the pitch contest. Because uh, now we're going to have a small break uh, to get you fueled with some beer or non-alcoholic drinks. And meanwhile, you can socialize and brainstorm ideas. But he will tell the rules. So, who knows the wine pitch? Who doesn't know the wine pitch? What are you thinking now? <laughs> like no hands. We have no hands. What should we do? So nod the head if you know what is wine pitch at Tech Hub. Yeah. Nod the head if you don't know. Okay. So wine pitch, it's a two minute pitch, right? Two minute. And you have to present the idea. It's preferably that it's real concept we want to push more on the real side rather than previous years it has been pretty much like I'm going to build this imaginary thing <laughs> this robot which could yeah the fishing robot which can be controlled for <laughs> yeah the, we want to make it more real rather than uh, having these fictional crazy ideas so already uh, Yes. Yeah, it, actually it is stand up comedy, but uh I would I would personally prefer if it, if you could make two things in one, make it fun and make it real. Anyway, so 2 minutes and um you have to present what are you going to build? What's the market? What's the pricing model? How are you going to get the clients? So, how many ideas we have today? One Two, three. Well, wow, that was fast. <laughs> Very ideas. <laughs> um, and usually it's that uh, after this announcement, uh, people go and drink beer, and then they, as Latvians, when they're drunk, they're more brave, so then they have more ideas. So uh, it's uh, 10 minutes. Go and grab some beer in the kitchen, and then come back with Very Ideas. <laughs> Go. Uh, I want to know how many of you have you ever used calculator? Yeah, uh, potentially largest po uh, potential user base for my uh, pr product. Well, uh, design of uh, modern cal calculator haven't been uh, changed uh, since science invention of electronic calculator. I'm uh, here to s uh, solve this problem. I have uh, figured out a uh, design of future ca uh, calculator. Uh, monetization model uh, I call a social network for functions. You will be able to share your functions and this will cost a little bit. Or you uh, could not share your uh, functions and keep them private and it also would would cost a little bit, uh, like uh, GitHub does, uh, but I will decide a little bit later. So, uh, this calculator app is uh, supposed uh, mainly for uh, mobile uh, devices, and my competitor is not calculator, but my competitor is Microsoft Excel. But uh, Microsoft Excel does not allow uh, to define uh, higher order functions. Uh, so, my calculator will be better, more expressive, and you could define uh, your own functions, reuse these functions, share uh, these functions, use these functions from all your devices, 
and it will would be very easy to use from mobile phone it's out yo Uh, well, yes, a little bit. I think that uh, at uh, 17th of January we'll start a uh, startup weekend. Uh, I have applied for this event, and this will be a three-day event. And in this event, uh, my team will finish first prototype, and then I will publish it for free. And I, I will look how many uh, potential customers will will start to use it and then start charging. <laughs> I don't think so. If you remember uh, my previous speech, it was implicit lambda calculus. Actually, uh, uh, future calculator design is based on implicit lambda calculus. That's why I call it ill calculus. Okay. But addition is social uh, network for functions. Before, yeah, yeah. He has more courage than most of you. So, uh, about the wine pitch, that it's because the winner gets the wine. So, how many ideas we have now? One, two, three. Oh, still three. So, we're good. So, who's next? You want to be next? Do it. Oh, the same? Um, I couldn't uh, speak in English in some weeks. Okay. <laughs> My idea is about one web app application where will be uh, some videos, some tutorials about uh, people emotions and just how they um, offer some information, how they uh, learn, uh, teach something about gesticulary, uh, not just speaking. And then people mm, can learn um, all, all em emotions, how to present, in, present make presentation, uh, like on here. <laughs> um, that will be like mm, some. Uh, that will be like uh, uh, one big um, tutorial where uh, uh, will be so much um, videos uh, how people um, present presenting um, their ideas or something teaching and other people who learn that they can learn um, how present uh, some things or like that. That's all I think. And, pe and people who le learn that all, they can see that on online um, application. And people who presenting some things or some ideas or some projects, they will upload videos how to do that. That's all I think. Okay. About donation. That will be good. That is, uh, I think uh, the idea is uh, good. Mm, like open source is. <laughs> Um, because uh, I think that will be sim similar like learning on some tutor tutorial uh, because they 
people read something and they 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 can uh, looking on the video or how to manage yeah, or how to do. Mm, not exactly. Uh, Please don't have time. <laughs> hmm. Maybe under the videos, people can um, add some descri description about that. What is there? What is on the video? I think the most idea about that uh, project will be about uh, how people are presenting, not about national or language or something else. No, no, uh, about uh, arms, I think, mostly, not just uh, this cat. <laughs> He's still braver than most of you. You can go. So, I still have this wine. How many ideas we have? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Still, now we are four. It's like one presenting and one... So, yeah, you're, you're still here. You're next. You're next. So, that's it. We have six contestants, so it's pretty cool. Oh, who is taking notes? Are you taking notes? I'm taking notes. Okay, so uh, come on and present. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, social network for sick. That's the idea. Story is what? I got sick on Christmas. It was nasty, nastier than even usual. So I was taking some new medicine. I read the manual took it for a week, then, well, I decided to read again because of alcohol and stuff. I read it again, no problems with alcohol, problems with other medicine I was taking. And it's a four list of small text and three small lines about that. So that's the problem. So I thought, how I want it to be? I want to pick up my phone and check in, hey, I'm coughing. And it tells me, hey, there is thousand Chinese people in the next building doing the same. And they took some tea and it helped them. So it's kind of like Foursquare, but you check in your symptoms and check out the tips that people with same symptoms are living. Uh, and yeah, medicine, doctors can be friended, and so on. That's the idea. Actually, I was preparing for three minutes. I kind of cut the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had different idea, but it's for something for European Commission to do. <laughs> Yeah, business model uh, partnerships. Uh, firstly, with medicine producers, I can promote something uh, for people that are sick. Uh, uh, secondly, yeah, partnership with actually specialists in health care. So, this kind of model. Yeah, it's mobile app and social network, kind of, like Forkware, just for sick people. <laughs> Not necessarily mentally sick, but possibly too. <laughs> Yeah, there is a market in this. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's, I kind of read few papers from Foursquare because they are solving same problem. So, but I can tell you right now. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, but that's definitely not something I want to do, so it's probably will be way later. It's not something I will be aiming at first. Because actually, like for example, I, I know people that are in the medical industry of European Union, I was consulting them. Joke is that by love, they need to mention that they have problems in the manual. And that's it. They may make uh, like five pages of manual with small one line of problems somewhere. Uh, so, 
Yeah, and I, that's the problem I want to solve. I want users to start using this and those companies coming to me and now playing by my rules. Before uh, before time start to ticks, I want to So before time starts to tick, I want to can I want question because I have one term I don't know translation. It's called sky weekly. Maybe I I will no sky tishan is the what abacus yes or counting frame or something like this. Yeah. Or or. I will st say something like abacus. Okay, let's start. So, uh, as a first picture, uh, uh, was take take a small poll about calculating. So I will I want to ask you, how many of you are using uh, accountants, like like freelancers or uh, accountant accountant uh, companies? Thank you. So there is there is a <laughs> uh, there is a problem. Uh, you have uh, uh, you can uh, turn to your accountant uh, in uh, only on business hours. So, but the uh, problem is uh, if you are some manager or uh, uh, businessman, uh, your idea, for example, for me. I did, well, my ideas are uh, the best ideas I have. Uh, I have in uh, evening or night, uh, and uh, if I have, if I need some numbers, I, I I can't call to my accountant and ask some numbers. So I I think there should be some application where can I see my uh, numbers. So the uh, solution is application. Uh, for accounting system, but it's read-only system, so you can not blame everything. So uh, that's a simple solution. And business model, there is two. For example, business to business, where when uh, you can afford this uh, application to companies who is. Uh, Accountant uh, companies who is <laughs> that's all. <laughs> Something like that, yes. Do you have a do you have application for reports? I don't have. Sorry. <laughs> for example, that's the third uh, business model. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, oh, damn. Okay. Uh, so, just to boost up the competition and make some laughs, hopefully. Uh, so, question one How many of you drive car? A car. Oh, great. So, and how many of you do you enjoy to have, you know, a beer, a wine? Yeah. Yes, you do. I and, yes, so, 
The question is, uh, how many of you would like to drive but have a pint of beer or glass of wine? Nice. Nice. Me too. Okay. Okay. So he here's the thing. I don't know. I haven't done the research, but does there exist an application in real time that could tell whether you're good to go or you should better stay in the pub? and wait for the taxi. So basically, here's the idea. You show there is. OK, then, thank you very much. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> it's, it's a great idea, right? <laughs> so oh, OK, so, so here, here, here's the thing. Uh, it's going to be real. Oh, right, yeah, because I haven't found it in the app stores, at least here. OK, I haven't even searched that. But never mind. Uh, ne never mind. So first thing, it's real time. You Type in your um, like weight, age, uh, gender, uh, yeah. Uh, how much have you ate? You know, like fries, burger, something else, and and how many beers or wine you had, and yeah, and just it kind of in real time calculates if you're good to go. Thank you. Now we have the drunk app. Which was that? That was the one where you could check: Are you drunk? Yes, I, I see some people voting already, but still too small amount. I'm voting for it, so you got four votes. I see the winner is coming. So the pickup pizza guy. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, forty, sixteen, seventeen. Okay. Bitcoin wallet? Four. We got a winner. Pick up pizza guy. I will give you one, but I won't take you home. You don't have to say any of anything, but you can. Well, maybe if there's the lawyer, uh, the developer, and designer, then... You should apply for the next Garage 48. Ah, oh, there's Startup Weekend uh, ne next week. Ne next uh, Saturday, there's a place where you can go, you can pitch, and exactly, you ask, and then you code for... Yeah, exactly. You have already the, that you have an idea and a wine. So I think we might run out of beer, so go and grab it.